Hello and welcome to this week's beginner's guide. This week we will be looking at the four Heritor hero skills which you can unlock using skill points over here. We have this one, this one, and I think I've learned two others down here. Yeah, this one and this one. After we've talked about that in detail, I want to talk a little bit about some of the stronger synergies between the Heritor Secret Tech and all six of the races that are in the game. There are some that are better than others, so yeah, I think that is worth highlighting and going over in detail. Now, let's go back and take a closer look at Essence Harvest. You get access to Essence Harvest and Essence Discipline at the very beginning of the game. Essence Shields has a required level, level 4, and Deny the Void has a required level of level 8. So you will need to wait a little bit of time to actually get those ones. I don't really like Essence Harvest. It is kind of nice to be able to generate an Essence Charge every time turn at the beginning of the battle before you've already engaged an enemy, but wasting a turn to do that in the middle of combat seems like it's really unoptimal, and I would, I would, um, I think that I'd rather use my hero to do damage or maybe tank a couple shots than generate a little tiny bit of essence. The other one that you have access to at the beginning, I recommend getting as early as possible. If you don't have a way to get essence off of an enemy, the essence discipline doesn't do you any good. I think because I started off with this guy in a in a chopper, he wasn't able to get essence and I, I kind of felt like I wasted that. But if you give him the scepter, or if you um, give him another uh, mod, that lets him get essence like this one here, then you can get a lot of free XP and that will allow your hero to become much more useful much more quickly. You'll be able to unlock other things like, um, does this have a required level? Yeah, this thing will get unlocked a little bit quicker if you um, focus on getting experience through your essence charges. So yeah, I, I like that a lot. I, I think you should get that pretty early on. Maybe not at the very beginning of the game, but within the first 20 turns, I would say. Um, now we're ready to move on to Essence Shield, which is something I'm a big fan of. It only costs three skill points, and you get one extra shields for each Essence Charge that you have on you. If you have a lot of Essence Charges, like three or four, then um, you're going to get a lot more defensive value out of this. Of course, that's only going to protect you from um, it's only going to protect you from ranged attacks. If somebody gets in close with a melee attack, this isn't going to do you any good. So, I I think that you want to put this on leaders that you're going to be keeping relatively far back. If you put this on a melee hero, sure it can protect them a little bit from ranged attacks, but if they're a melee hero, they're going to be in me melee range taking melee damage. So. Yeah, even though um, it's not the best on a melee hero, only costs three skill points, I think I'd, I'd still recommend picking it up and, and combining it with some other um, mods that give you defense through um, armor. I wouldn't put all of your eggs in one basket and go armor, or rather all shields, because, you know, melee can get around that pretty easily. Now, let's talk about deny the void which is a pretty awesome skill if it's not combined with anything else that resurrects i was playing around with deny the void and a uh, escape module right before we i started recording this i was using this hero which i got through an archaeology site and i was putting on deny the void and escape module and the problem with that is it sees escape module um, first, and then because anything that works when a unit dies triggers all of the once per battle skills, it triggers this as well, and you don't get the advantages from it. So it's kind of like um, an issue. I wouldn't I wouldn't put this uh, 
both these skills on one person for that reason. If you're going to go with escape module, don't get deny the void later. If you're going to get deny the void later, don't get escape module. I like deny the void because it gives you more HP. It can give you a lot of HP. Say if this guy had four charges, which I believe he can have because he is, um, yeah, he's in the, this vehicle, I think. He can, he can get, what, 50 HP back when he dies? But, um, yeah, it's going to cost you six skill points. You have to be level eight to do that. Escape module is only going to cost you three skill points. You only need to be level four to do that. But when your, your unit dies, they only get 15 HP back, so it's... Um, it's a trade-off. You have to you have to plan these skills pretty far in advance if you've got a syndicate hair tour. Now, before we jump into the synergies between all the different um, races and the hair tour secret tech, I did want to mention that I really like using the martial tradition background to get ruthless killer when using the hair tour. Um, secret tech because when you have ruthless killer then you get to attack more often if you have one of the 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 essence building skills that's repeating that means that you can potentially get four charges in one round of combat and if you have a attack that's a single action um, then you can get a pretty high chance of getting two charges in one round of combat. You could run forward, kill a unit, get a charge, and then if you are lucky, you might be able to use that last action point to actually attack another unit. So a pretty strong little combination, pretty separate from everything else that I wanted to talk about. So worth mentioning before we, we jump into the... Um, the different races. I think my favorite race to use with the Heritor Secret Tech is the Assembly, um, and that's because they have a lot of cyborg units. If we go to this guy here, we can see he is a cyborg just like the Drained over here, and very similar to um, a lot of the other units that you, you get access to, like this uh, Heritor High Lord. So when you are um, developing your armies, your assembly armies, you can kind of throw in a couple cyborg units and they can take advantage of those special skills like the reassemble, um, what's it called? Reassemble special ability, which I really like on this, on this hero over here because guess what? If one of my drain dies, I can bring him back. Yay! That's really good because they're kind of squishy and easy to kill off. So, um, yeah, it seems like on the forums people are in agreement that the assembly are the, the best secret tech to use with the Heritor, mostly because of the cyborg synergies and um, a couple other little things along, along the way. Uh, mostly that though. I think the Heritors are pretty good at killing machines, so having machine units to kill off the humanoids kind of combines really well too. Um, there's another skill on here that sh which is super nice. I haven't put on this hero because I like using my hero. I think it's pretty cool getting a lot of damage dealt by that, that nice unit, but there's this cybernetic overdrive which allows you to um, refill all the actions on a on a cyborg unit so high lord yes why not sounds good seems very very powerful and like something that might be tweaked in the future maybe this won't affect all tier units in the future but there's a there's a reason they wrote it this way they want you to use that every once in a while it costs you a hero's action point so yeah weigh those options um I like using stabilizers on heroes that aren't in vehicles, but because this guy is in a vehicle, he really doesn't need it. He's got some stagger resistance. I could make him stagger immune with that, but um, 
yeah, just adding that vehicle gives some nice amount of stagger resistance. I don't know. That's not really a an assembly heritage trait combo, but it's still one of my favorite ones to grab, and I think it's only like two points. Uh, where is it? Yeah, it's only two points. You probably should. There's some others in here. It's okay. That's okay. But you can skip those if you're trying to spend your points on vitality and other little things. Um, another thing that works well with the assembly hair tour uh, combination is siding with either the Paragon or the Forgotten. If I search Cyborg up here, you'll see that most of these units are some form of an assembly guy. Um, let's see, where's this guy? No, he's not assembly, he's just siphoner. All right, Malakutur, or however you say it. He is an assembly Malakutur, that's why he is a cyborg. Um, but there are these Paragon units, like the soldier, who are also cyborg. So you, you combine that with your assembly heritor combination, you got like a crazy amount of cyborgs that can take advantage of your cyborg skills and abilities. And maybe the, the mods from the Paragon will benefit your heritor units and your assembly units quite nicely. Um, on top of that, the Forgotten make a pretty nice combination because they focus on entropy damage and essence draining. There aren't a lot of cyborg uh, forgotten. In fact, there may be none. I'm not seeing any in this list right here. So yeah, even though there aren't any cyborgs um, in that, just because they focus on the same type of damage, I think would work really, really well. Not necessarily a great combination for the assembly, but pretty Pretty similar to the Paragon, you might want to use those with the Hair Tour if they appear on your map. I wouldn't go to war with them, I'd probably side with them. Now I think we're ready to talk about the Kirko. Okay, I found a Kirko. Now we can talk a little bit about the Hair Tour Kirko combination. At first I really liked the idea of combining the Kirko with the Hair Tour because I saw that there were a lot of nice mods for the Hair Tour that gave you more shields and I really like how Swarm Shielding gives um, your Kirko the ability to take a lot of range damage and when people close the distance they can finish them off with melee. They got some pretty strong melee. I also like the idea of combining the biological units of the Kirko with the Heritor's Cyborg, but when I actually looked at these special abilities, there's just a lot of things that are for biological things and only biological things, or things that only benefit the Kirko, like the Swarm Shielding. So after some thought, I think this is one of my least favorite combinations. It, at first, I thought it might be kind of nice, and it's not the worst. Um, it's just still okay. You can use some of the skills, some of the special skills, like this selfless sacrifice or um, the shrouded step to you know, be pretty useful to do some things with the commander, but it feels very independent to the the hair tours specialty so um, if that's if you're gonna be combining these two you should really focus on I think Kirko units or hair tour units and just make sure that those guys have as much attention and love and research as they possibly can because if you you split yourself too much between the two that might end up hurting you at the same time it gives you a lot of ways to respond to aggressors. You don't have to use biological units, you don't have to use mechanical units, you can use a mix of two and then the AI is going to have a little bit of trouble figuring out how to counter you. You know, even human opponents will have a little bit of trouble figuring out how to counter you. Um, yeah. The next race we're talking about is the Vanguard. I I'm not a giant fan of a lot of the Vanguard skills. Coordinated Strike is pretty nice. Making a, a target easier to hit is super useful for your high damage units. You can use this guy to kind of find your target and then your other ones to attack. But typically I like to use my hero to do damage, so you can kind of ignore this. If you've got a pug in the army, then they'll do they'll do that for you. You don't need this. Um, 
dig in is pretty good. I like having a little bit more damage resistance. Um, but really, apart from that, there's not a lot of Vanguard traits that I would take when you know using a, a Heritor Vanguard because none of these really synergize. There's you know your Martial Inspiration, your Rallying Cry, your Iron Discipline, kind of nice really not worth focusing on. I think with the Vanguard, a lot of their synergy comes through um, mods and buildings. I saw in the forums somebody really likes using jetpacks with their siphoners. If you jetpack a siphoner behind an enemy unit, that's, you know, that's really nice. I don't even know if I had the jetpacks in this one. But, um, yeah, you can just jump into an nice bit of cover or a flanking position and get a lot of high damage attacks with those jetpacks so putting them on siphoners sounds yeah quite cool pretty useful and um if you want you can build the combat simulation um, center which will level up your your drained safely when you're drained to get to max level they can mind control any unit um, not any unit, a tier 1 and tier 2 unit until they get a certain doctrine. I think once they get a doctrine, then they can mind control tier 3 units. So getting them to max rank, allowing them to, to mind control whatever they want by using this combat simulation center uh, sounds very powerful and um, a nice safe way to get your, your drained to be max level and to get the most out of them. So yeah. The Vanguard do have quite a few nice advantages when combined with the Heritor tech. It's just not in the in the traits themselves or in the uh, what are we calling them? Hero skill upgrades. Vanguard hero skills. Yeah. Now we're ready to talk more about the Syndicate Heritor combination. We've already talked about how the escape module is very similar to the deny the void and how if you're going to take one don't take the other i like getting resurrection early the escape module is pretty cheap and pretty useful but deny the void is better so you may want to save your points until level eight to try and get that really really nice thing um but let's talk a little bit more about the other skills now that we are actually looking at this this combo i like the deploy cerebral um, control collars for a hero because it's really nice taking an enemy unit and making them yours it can turn the numbers in your favor and you know what if it doesn't go through at least the enemy's disabled for one turn and guess what this is on a cooldown for three turns it's not like you get to use it once per battle that's really really cool so you know maybe you can um yeah, like recharge something, your action points or something like that to not action points here. There's things that allow you to reduce your cooldowns. I don't think you can necessarily use that with a hero, but I guess it's possible. He is a cyborg. Maybe you can use one of the other cyborg type skills to regenerate his action points over here. Um, keen sight, eh, not that great. I'm pretty, I'm not a fan of that. I think it's pretty useless. Shield battery pretty cool. I like that a lot if you're leading an army, but I think for whatever reason this person is leading the army even though they're level 14, so it's kind of hard to use and if you're still early on in the game in a, in a playthrough in a match, maybe don't invest in that. Um, but once you split off everybody and they're doing their own thing, yeah, get that. That's pretty cool. I like this. It's always nice to have more strategic operations support. Um, subterfuge, eh, you can ignore that. But there's more to this combo than just the the hero skills. There's um, there's mods, and it seems like people really, really like putting the indentured mod on their siphoners to make them cheaper. Um, and yeah, I think combine that making your armies cheaper with being able to create drained off of the enemy or maybe indentured off of the enemy means you're going to have a lot of very cheap armies very quickly that you can um, 
reinforce very easily. If you're indenturing your enemy or turning them into drained, the reinforcements appear exactly where you are. Like, for example, I attacked with these six units over here and I got two drained. Now they're right there and I don't have to take them from my capital and run them all the way over to the front line. So I think that the Syndicate have that as a pretty strong advantage. They're not the only Heritor um, race combination that has that advantage, but I think it is pretty, it's pretty massive for them. They get a, a pretty big advantage um, compared to the other races when it comes to just amassing forces quickly. I guess the Kirko also have that advantage, and I didn't mention that earlier, but I think it's less so the case with the Kirko than it is with the, uh, than the Syndicate. The Heritor Amazon combination was one that I originally thought would be pretty terrible because the Amazon focus on biological units and the Heritor have a lot of cyborg. Um, but I found after playing around with this playthrough for a while that they both have the ability to create units where your armies are fighting, which is a pretty powerful um, ability. If you use the primal override ability, where is he in here? You can take control of um, non mindless or non mechanical tier 1 or tier 2 animal units pretty consistently. You just needed a biomancer to put them to sleep and maybe a um, and, and scan them. I think if you scan them and then put them to sleep, there's a pretty good chance that you'll get the unit. So when you combine that with the uh, the ability to get drained off of humanoids, you can get a lot of units off of uh, the, the pickup sites. When you're facing machine units, uh, you're not going to get a free unit, but at least the Heritor are good against machine units. Um, but I think having that kind of flexibility for tackling sites, for just getting units and tackling sites is... It's incredibly useful. I mean, keep in mind, if you mind control an animal, then you don't have to kill it, and it might even help you kill some units. So, um, yeah, I I think you should try to get animals on your side when you're playing the Heritor Amazon, but there probably are some other valid strategies, like using certain mods from the Amazon tree with the... Um, uh, with the Heritor units, I think on the forums people were saying if you use Earth Link Mask on your siphoners, it's really nice. Yeah, that seems like it'd be a good thing to have your siphoners do. Just crushing people with, from a nice far range. And um, also, they were saying if you put Blood Fury on your. Uh, high Lords, yeah, that seems like something that would be good. Keep them around longer. When other people die, they get better. So, yeah, I I, I, I could see why you'd want to do that. Um, when it comes to the the traits or the, what do you call them, hero skills, um, Renewal is awesome because it applies to biological and cyborg units, which is what these guys are going to be focusing on. So, yeah, I would take that kind of have to. Um, this person, once they, they level up again, I'll probably give them that. I think I didn't take on this person because they were my damage dealer. I gave them visual acuity. You almost always have to do that as an Amazon. Just having extra range is it's incredibly powerful. Um, and then, yeah, I would consider getting the animal discipline if you're going to be building maybe any of these guys or converting a lot of animal units. So, um, yeah. There's a couple others in here which you can ignore. I don't really like this one. Ranger training is pretty useless, and, and Warcry you can, you can ignore. The last combination we're going to look at, the Heritor Devar, is actually surprisingly good. I remember when I, I first thought about this combination, I thought this has got to be the worst one. The Heritor are anti-machines, they're machine killers, and the Devar use a lot of machines or mechanical units. So I just, 
I didn't see um, any real possibility for them to be a good combination. But then when I actually played the combination, I thought it was really nice having machine units and anti-machine units working alongside each other because, well, machine units aren't so great at killing other machine units. They're pretty good against other units, um, specifically ones that do psychic damage. But the they themselves actually struggle with dealing damage to armor. So, yeah, I, I think that that is really, really nice, having the like entropy damage channel to attack through because if you go Cynumbra, um, machines have a inherent resistance to psionic attacks of four, uh, which we'll call it for psionic resistance. That's like having four more points of armor. So yeah, it, it makes it pretty hard to actually take them out with psychic damage. So people tend to focus on arc damage and now I guess you can focus on entropy damage to try and help you fight them down. But on top of all of this, there's some really, really nice hero skills or hero upgrades that you can that you can use to make um, your guys better. Well, there's one in particular which I think is really, really cool. This one right here, you can charge up a mechanical or a cyborg unit to give it boosted, which increases its damage by 20%, which I have to imagine is incredible when you use it on a high lord or maybe a siphoner well siphoners before the most recent patch where they took two points of damage off of their repeating attack but hey that might not stay that might go back i have a feeling siphoners might get more attention later on down the road it was just everybody was using them because they're kind of amazing i mean why wouldn't you if you could um but yeah i, I really do think that's really cool not not only does it do that it does it for three turns you've got a cooldown of one turn so you can just kind of go throughout your army and, and keep char charging people um i like that idea just having like a support hero charging your your people i haven't tested it yet i don't really like doing support heroes but it sounds decently strong there's some other skills in here which are pretty cool that one's all right i guess um having more armor is never never bad i like stubborn because it gives you you know stagger immunity if you got stagger resistance then eh, you know you can ignore that but you know just being able to never be staggered is super nice um oh and siege master i think was the last one that i wanted to just kind of show off i like that one it's just like a, a good all-around skill so you can make it so that your units are all around just harder to kill um and deal with if you got that so you might as well take it all right well, that's it for all six of the combinations that go with the Heritor secret deck. I really enjoyed researching this video and recording it. When I was researching it, I actually uncovered a lot of cool information about um, some of the races in the forms that I don't think I would have come up on my own. I don't think I would have discovered a lot of that stuff on my own. And I feel like there's a lot of information here. so. At least on this topic, there, there's a lot of information that I could be going over. So if there's anything that you feel like I missed, please let me know in the comments below, and I'll try and pass on your your knowledge to the forums and Reddit and all those places so that people can start discussing uh, what they like using with what in you know more detail. So yeah, um, if there's any suggestions you have for future videos please let me know this was one that was suggested to me and one that i was a little nervous to do synergies it's pretty complicated but i think i might want to do more synergy videos to maybe go through all of the secret texts and um like some of the mods and units and things that you can use with them this seems like a pretty reasonable amount of material to try and tackle in in one video so i'll think more about it um, I haven't decided on anything. If you got suggestions for different types of videos, I'd also love to, to get those thoughts in the comments below. See you around. Have a good one.